हेलो स्टूडेंट्स नाउ द थर्ड टॉपिक ऑफ न्यूमेरिकल सोल्यूशन ऑफ पार्शियल डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन इज सोल्यूशन ऑफ इलिप्टिक इक्वेशन इन योर टॉपिक नंबर वन दैट इज इन द क्लासिफिकेशन यू हैव स्टडीड दैट देर आर टोटल थ्री टाइप ऑफ इक्वेशन एंड द सेकेंड ऑर्डर पार्शियल डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन वन वॉज एलिप्टिक सेकेंड वॉज पैराबॉलिक एंड थर्ड वॉज हाइपरबॉलिक सो हेयर वी आर गोइंग टू फाइंड आउट द सोल्यूशन ऑफ इलिप्टिक इक्वेशन ओके now in the elliptic equations uh, you will uh, find out the solution for two type of equation one is laplace equation and the second is poisson equation in the laplace equation the equation is del square u that is curly square u over curly x square plus curly square u over curly y square equals to 0 and here in the poisson equation the equation is del square u that is curly square u over curly x square plus curly square u over curly y square is equal to f of x comma y Here the right hand side is zero, and here the right hand side contains a function of x comma y. So we are going to start with this Laplace equation. We will find out the solution for this Laplace equation. Okay. So starting with the solution of this Laplace equation. So this is your equation: curly square u over curly x square plus curly square u over curly y square equal to zero. So we have written it here, right? now in this case now i will write down the formula for the second order derivative using my topic number 2 that i have done the finite difference approach to partial differential equation you remember there we have derived the formula for this so the same formula we have written here right then curly square u over curly y square for this the same formula is written here now you will assume uh, now you will uh, wondering that here it is h but we are doing the derivative with respect to y so here sh it should be k at the place of h so what we have taken we have taken a square mesh as we have taken there are rectangular mesh right so the h and k were different so here we have taken a square mesh like this and in this this distance and this distance is same so h is equals to k okay so that's why we have written here h at the place of k now we have uh, we can take this 1 over h square common and we can shift it to the right hand side then uh, the left values will be of uh, ui minus 1 comma j ui plus 1 comma j ui j plus 1 this value ui j minus 1 here it is minus right so Uh, and this value minus two u i j and minus two u i j that is minus four u i j that we can shift to the right hand side. Now this four can be shifted to this side, so we can find out the value for u i j. So u i j is equal to one over four and this value. Okay. Now this formula, that is to find out the value of this function u at point i comma j. Equal to this. This formula is called standard five point formula. Okay, and what are these values? How to uh, denote these values in the table? Look here. If this will be your u i j, the point u i j, this. So uh, where these all will lie, they all will be like this. Now it is i minus one comma j. So i minus one comma j is on this side. Then this is i plus one comma j. It is on the right hand side. Then i j minus one. It is downward. Then i j plus one. It is upward. So these are around this u i comma j point. Uh, left side, right side, upward side, and downward side. So using these four values, you can find out the value for this u by using this formula, the standard five point formula. Okay. Similarly, we can also derive another formula, and that formula is called diagonal five-point formula. How it works? Now look here. Now this is your point U I J. Now these are the points. Like this point was U I J plus one. So if I move to this side here, at this place, so here I is I minus one, and here J is J plus one. So this value has become U I minus one J plus one, right? If I move to this point, this one. So here your j is j plus one and your i is i plus one. So this has become i plus one, j plus one. If I move to this side, here this i is i, and sorry, here at this point, 
at this point your i is i minus 1 and your j is j minus 1 here i is i minus 1 because you have shifted from this to this side here i is i minus 1 j is j minus 1 so the point is i minus 1 j minus 1 right and at this point this one here i is i plus 1 and your j is j minus 1 so this is your point so using these four points which are at diagonal to this point u i comma j using these four points i can again find out the value for u i j and this is called my diagonal five point formula there are total two formulas one is standard five point formula in the standard five point formula the values are here upside downside left side right side in the diagonal five point formula the values are here to all the diagonal points to u i j so using these points i can find out the value for all these u's this mesh will be given to you in your question and it will be uh, the b's are the boundary points the boundary values okay these are your boundary values and these are your mesh values so you have to find out these mesh points using these boundary values how you will find out these points using these two formulas the boundaries values will be given to you in the question and you have to find out the values for these mesh points okay so you will apply these two formulas and you will use all these values to find out these mesh points fine so now uh, when you have uh, calculated all the values of uij look here in figure 1 that I have shown you this one this figure 1 in figure 1 having found all the values of uij using standard 5 point formula and diagonal 5 point formula now we have to check the accuracy now we have to check the values of mesh point that we have uh, calculated are they accurate or not then we will apply the iteration procedure again iteration procedure that we uh, apply always to find out the accuracy of the calculated value so here again we will uh, check the accuracy so following two methods are used either of one method is repeated till the difference between the consecutive iterates become negligible you know already that you have to apply the procedure again and again till you will get the values same the consecutive value same there are total two methods to find out the accuracy one is Jacobi's method how you got this Jacobi's method uh, in your standard 5 point formula 2 this one you just have to write n plus 1 on the left hand side and n on the right hand side and you will got your Jacobi formula that is called Jaco point Jacobi's formula okay and uh, how you will get your this gauss seidel method in the gauss seidel method you will not write n on all the values in your second formula that is standard point formula but what you will do you will write n plus 1 on i minus y i minus 1 value n on i plus 1 value n plus 1 on j plus 1 value and j n on j minus 1 value. here all are n here it is alternative you have to remember that the point containing this i minus 1 that will have this n plus 1 and the point containing this j plus 1 will have this n plus 1 all other two will be having n and here again it will be n plus 1 you have to denote these values and you will get this gauss seidel method uh, formula okay now out of these two formulas this gauss seidel scheme converges twice as fast as jacobis fine so whenever uh, you will solve any question and then you have to apply the iterative procedure you will try to apply this gauss seidel method because it will converge faster than this okay so uh, this was the method to solve the laplace equation now in our next lecture we will study the example in which we will solve a laplace equation using these two formulas standard 5 point formula and diagonal 5 point formula and then we will check the accuracy of the mesh points that we will calculate using these two methods Jacobi's method and Gauss-Seidel method fine
थैंक यू स्टूडेंट्स